please welcome Ria Tregobov. Thank you, and uh, thank you so much, for Charlene, for including me in this evening. It's just wonderful to be home again. Um, I wanted to read three poems uh, for you this evening, um, two that are uh, a little bit long and one that's sort of regular. So, uh, And I love being here. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. This one is called Country and Western. My grandfather, absolutely foreign, his sheared sealskin angular hat set right straight on the middle of the top of his head, not cowboys, but his buffalo coat I saw only thrown over the hood of the car to keep the engine warm and thought he was wrong again in his old country fashion. But he was right. You can keep the inanimate warm with something that was once alive. My country. The stones of Odessa, the Black Sea, was a terrible thing, I thought. Black as oil and cold. Steps went straight down to it and the waves licked at them. Terrible, too, the cold avenues of Winnipeg, where the Jews slotted themselves into streets named Selkirk and Salter. Tea with lemon sucked through a sugar cube, poppy seed roll in the oven. And outside, the smell of wet wool, clean city smell, the taste of the screen door and my own blood, how our flesh loves metal at that temperature cold that sings in the brain like a fever. And it wasn't just winter. It was the squeak, squeak of the swings my father and his brothers made, the heart-shaped, spade-shaped leaves of the lilac bush, my father turning, turning, spading the black soil. What does a Jew do with the garden? We grow beets for the borscht, rhubarb, dill for the pickles, cukes, we grow peas for the kids to peek, pick and eat that never see the table. But when Don Messer's Jubilee came on TV, we turned it off. The family rose as one and turned our backs because there is no irony in country music. You have only the one hand, not the other. It's pure and straight and true. Unlike life on the outside, or life on the inside. Unlike being both here and there, or neither here nor there. Unlike the red, cold, sweet, and sour heart of beet soup. And these two poems are from the new book, and this is the very first time that I've read for it, from it. I just had it in my hands a few days, and it's an astonishing, uh, astonishing feeling. So two poems from this book. Um, there's a series that the last section of the book called Family Dinners, and in the last few years, um, my dad was quite ill, and I was back and forth from Vancouver to the uh, back to Winnipeg uh, several times. So the series is based on that, and this is one of the earliest poems in it. Family Dinners, Gordy. We're eating corn on the cob. We're eating wild rice with dried mushrooms and my mother's pickerel fillets. And we're remembering Granite Lake, whose water let us see down to those wave patterns in the bottom sand, the shadows of the ripples on the surface playing games with the solid ripples below. I see my small feet, tan toes, my mother cooking breakfast on the black wood stove the outdoor biffy, the canoes resting mysteriously upside down and dry in the boathouse. The Smith boy, my mother asks, the one with hair so blonde it was white. What was his name? Gordy, my dad tells us. And then we all remember the sunny afternoon he drifted out beyond his depth, his white crew cut sailing above the stiff orange life jacket, that perfect boy and his dad ran the length of the dock, dove off, and my dad tried running, young and strong, through the shallows, but the water held him back. It felt like claws, my dad says. I see him running, see the fierce stroke of Gordy's dad's arms, the slow, thick horror of it as both men worked to keep the boy from something terrible. 
all our mother's warnings condensing, their dread precipitating to the long seconds we stood and watched the sun and the dock and the lake. All our mother's warnings, their dread tipped over because it was fine. They got him. He never went under. It was all always fine. Didn't we, years too late, find the weight on the shore, leafing through comics the necessary two hours after breakfast, after lunch, as we went brown and browner, so we wouldn't get cramps, drown, was all hooey? They were such a tragic family, my mother says, forking me some of her pickerel. They're floured and pan-fried, sweet with onion, and she's had enough. The sentence lies on the table in front of us. I don't remember that part. She tells me the dad died early, tipped over shoveling snow. And then the mother, beyond her depth, went under, killed herself. The pattern of his death overlaying her life, all she had left of it. My mother remembers them dancing. I can taste the clean flesh of the fish in my mouth. It's good. That golden boy grown, orphaned. Three of us at the table, the rest of the family not far off, all these years later, intact. And the last poem uh, I'll be reading this evening is from the same series. It's called Family Dinners Harvest. and. Uh, it was actually back in Winnipeg about a week ago when we had that splendid warm weather. So just think back, <laughs> maybe it'll warm us all uh, to a hot September day. The garden's gone wild. What a summer, rain and cold. Now, in September, we get July. I haven't been home since June and all I did then did nothing. I wasn't here to help. Yanking late weeds in the heat, I can think only waste, ruin. But my mother thinks otherwise. She did what she could do, has what she has. Everywhere weeds, yes, but also Johnny Jump Ups, Christmas roses, calendula, bachelor's buttons amuck among the beds. Impatience, begonias tidily abloom in their boxes. Tomatoes my sister gave in spring as seedlings greeny still, but beginning to grow rosy. We'll take them in before frost. Peppers just now fattening, patty pan squash, plump, ripe, yellow, rhubarb waving by the back fence. Nobody noticed when the tree by the garage came down, the gift of a neighbor's elm kept the kitchen window filled. Come spring, my mother will sod the garden over. It's too much work. I know. We decide to try a new recipe, chutney made of the humblest ingredients, rhubarb and onion stewed three hours till it comes to an unrecognizable rich darkness. We make a meal with what we've got, ripening tomatoes, pepper, steamed squash my mother's chicken spiced with the new chutney. We make a meal, the three of us, again, me, my mother, my father with his cane gentling himself into his chair, the three of us still. Thank you. That's Ria Trigovov, beautiful poems, Ria, thank you.